Hey everyone, my name's Silver. Welcome back to the channel. And today, guys, we got Asha. Well, we actually haven't got an Asha news yet. But I thought, being that we should get Asha news either tonight or tomorrow, that I would do my theory video. Now, Black Moon has done his own theory. I have yet to watch it. But go check it out anyways. He's an awesome YouTuber. Let's get him up to 1,000 subscribers and let's try to get me up to 200, please. I really would like 200 subscribers. And if you didn't check out my last video, go right ahead. It's pretty awesome. It's reviewing the um, Zeroth Dragon for the Dragon Empire. So, yeah. Today, guys, we're going to be covering the Asha, the, Z the Awakening of the Zoo, and maybe the new Big Belly. I don't think we actually have anything in here about the new Big Belly. Let's see. Great Nature, we just have a mini belly. Um, nothing, no. This is actually somewhat new in this area. New Mustard Here support. So we're getting Mustard Here support. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, nothing about the new Big Belly or its name. So, guys, I wanted to talk about the Xeroth Dragon first. As always, this thing I am excited for. I want to see its skill. And we should hopefully be seeing it soon in the anime. Um, it's said to have the highest, it's the biggest power in Vanguard history. I honestly think this is referring to either its written power, where it's its base, or that its skill literally gives it the highest known power in Vanguard. But we don't know much about Xeroth, so and this is a, I have a, I have um a video. Covering the last three Xeroth Dragons, I think, or the last four. Let's see, we have two confirmed and four unconfirmed. Yeah, that. My brain's not working. So, we'll talk more about this guy later. Today, we're here to talk about this card. Recluse of Phantasmic Blue Asha. And, overall, I like this card art. Like, guys... I really, really like this card art, and I can't wait for this set because I'm buying four copies of her. She's at fairly reasonable price. She's a triple rare, which makes me very confident in her pull rate because, as if you don't know, Bushiro's new system for pulling cards where you get seven cards a pack is amazing. So this right here is what I'm going to be going off of for my theory. What I received from you was the power to go beyond dreams. So, what's this mean? I don't got a clue. It's its flavor text. But if we use elementary dear Watson, we can figure out what it, what its skill could potentially be. So, a lot of cards' effects are related to their flavor text. Deleters normally have something about deleting your opponent's vanguard, as in all will be lost, or something like that. Um, Alter Ego has a pretty interesting one. Um... I mean, even Gear Chronicles, Malt, Metal Pulsar, Mystery Freeze Dragon skill is show me the future that I truly desire, which I'm looking at right now because I have a copy of it in its SGR form because it was $3 and I'm not going to pass up an SGR for 3 bucks. Um, Yeah, guys, do it. get the SGR while it's still cheap. So, why is this important? Well, I believe it has something to do with Miguel. Miguel was a wonderful character that we had for one whole episode. And spoilers alert to a lot of people, just in case you aren't caught up with this show, Miguel is a character that Tokoha meets at the beginning of the Under-20 series. Miguel unfortunately passes away. He gets hit by a car or something. To our knowledge, he is dead. And throughout the Under-20, that is Tokoha's... Um, motivation. Miguel's unit was a mustard here unit. I can't remember its name. It's one of the grade threes. Um, it's like white clover or something. But overall, the unit was meant to entrust and protect Asha. And it does that overall. It pledges its allegiance. And I, I feel like Tokoha fell in love with Miguel, which I ship. I totally do. 100%. So, when Miguel died, Tokoha entered the under 20 to be, to live out Miguel's dream and win. She unfortunately doesn't, as we know Chrono or Team Strider does. 
But this is important because it looks in the card art that Asha has traveled elsewhere or has gained power from Miguel's spirit to become the recluse of phantasmic blue Asha. Now, with this card, I do firmly believe that we are going to get new grade threes for Altmile, Chronojet, Gurguet, and units like that that have had two grade threes for a while. Maybe a new Fenrir, Bushiro, give Fenrir a new card art. Besides the point of that little rant. So, what is her skill going to be? I'm going to start off with something simplistic. It's going to be an on start skill. Probably going to cost a counter blast of one. When your G unit strides, you may choose a rear guard. Call up to five copies of that unit from deck to rear. So, or choose two and call up to as many units as you like from deck with the same name. And for every unit called, she's going to have a bloom skill and, gonna, and the stride unit's going to require the name, which is going to activate bloom. So how it's going to work is like give your vanguard bloom, choose a unit, Choose like two cards and call any any number of cards from deck with same new same name as the units chosen with this effect and give it bloom. Or not give it bloom, but call them to rear guard. Why would this be good? Well, let's start off. So if Asha requires two names of two different cards and the bloom skills of those units, or the stride does, that effectively means as she's striding she's activating bloom already because of how wording is placed if it says when your unit strides give it the name of chosen units that means your vanguard is yet to a finished striding which means it's placed it's the sort of the same wording with um gear chronicles upheaval and old chronojet old chronojet skills counter boss one when a g unit strides send one of your opponent's units to the bottom of deck upheaval was when it's placed on vanguard and you have a Colonel Jet Heart, you may send all your punch regards to bottom of deck and call X number new. Now, because of wording, I can activate either skill in any order. I was personally a fan of using Upheaval to put five to the bottom, which got my uh, gear Crescent Wolves off. And then, once that was done, when my opponent was done calling five new cards, I didn't generally. Um, counter blast one to use Chrono Jet skill to do the same, so I got a 6k bonus to my Crescent Wolves if I had any on the rear guard. That was good, and I could see the skill being it as it just blooms, it gives the new stride bloom, which gives it power beyond our wildest dreams, which will make the deck very strong and a lot of first strides very broken. I think they can limit this to probably a GB2 and give Asha a secondary stride skill where she could activate as her first stride or whatever, where it's stride and call a unit. Um, I really don't know. I'm really getting impatient for the skill because I, I want to know. But I honestly think it's going to get the ability to bloom off of rear guards being placed that don't share its name because it's going to give a new name. Maybe it's... um. Choose a rear guard, call up to four copies of it, and give the vanguard the same name. That way, Bloom can still go off and build columns. Um, the only other thing I can think, this skill has to be plot turning, so um, I don't know how they would do it, but Asha could potentially beat Xeroth Dragons right now. Maybe she has, maybe she has resist. Maybe this Asha unit has a vanguard resist. Why would that be good? It would instantly stop the Dragon Empire um, Xeroth Dragon. Any unit that says target Vanguard, so Witches would be down a skill. Um, I don't know. There's a few clans out there that target Vanguards to do stuff. Like It would remove any unique skill of dealing an instant damage to a Vanguard, like some clans like to do. Um, what else could this fit? I mean, there's a lot this could do. And it's just, it's our card art overall is pretty fantastic. I'm excited for it because I want to see how this is going to affect the game flow. But that's not all I wanted to cover because tomorrow night or tonight, depending on when you're watching this, it's now currently 
November 11th. Happy the 11th, everyone. Changing my little desk wolf thing that Alyssa got me when she was in England. But I wanted to cover a couple other units. So Asha's done. I would like to cover something from set 13. But I think I might leave that for another video, guys. If you want a hint, it's the Overlord Destiny and Supreme Heavenly Dragon, Dragonic Overlord the Purge. So, right after this video, I'm going to be recording this and my thoughts on these two cards because they're released tonight in the new card fight episode. Overall, I think this Asha unit's going to be fairly good. And I like that it's a triple rare, making it pullable. Um, I really don't know how they can make this two plot tourney, so hopefully... Please, Bushiro, give us the skill. You said this week, I'm super excited for it. You're going to have some way to beat the Xeroth Dragons. I know that much. You're going to be awesome. Maybe you... You know, I don't see it, but they could... Bushiro could create Miguel, a new grade 3 must adhere, and as a unique skill, Legion with this Asha. Now, you might be asking why not put the Legion mark on here if that's the case. Maybe they don't want us to know that Asha can Legion with the new Miguel unit yet. That would be awesome. Let's let's look at context clues. There's white petals all over this. That's not normal color Asha. That's a Miguel mustard here unit. Um, there's just no way to tell what this thing can do until it's been released. So, I'm hoping maybe that the new Miguel unit will Legion if there's a new Miguel unit. Another theory for another day. But guys, I've been the Silver Wolf, and I'll see you all later. Peace!